Hey everybody, we have made it to day 51. We are in a heavy day for our cycle series. I always love the heavy days. So I have a set of 30 pound dumbbells, a set of tens, and a 35 pound kettlebell. I'm gonna be using for my overhead pulls, wanting just a little bit more uh, than the 30 on that. So as always, let's get a nice solid warm up before we get going under all that heavy load. Hinge back into your child's pose for me. Sit the hips nice and far down over your heels. Hopefully you're at the point you can get your chest pretty close to your thighs and your butt pretty close to your heels. Arms reaching forward and then just kind of shift your hips left and right. I always like how this makes my hip flexors feel. I can kind of check in with my hips, my low back, mid back, upper back, just fine where I might be tight. I need a little bit more time today before we get going. Take a deep inhale and then exhale and then let's pull ourselves all the way forward into our up dog or seal pose squeeze the shoulder blades back make sure you're not collapsing into your neck open through the chest tuck through the tailbone come to your hands and knees all right we're going to do a few scapula squeezes so from your hands and knees go ahead and tighten through your transverse abdominis we want to find and flex the core then you're going to let your shoulder blades pinch together and then round as you push into the ground. So it's kind of like a cat cow, but we're really focused on your upper back. Elbows point back to reach your thighs. You should feel some flexion between the shoulder blades, constant core. And then as you push up, you feel your serratus muscles and your chest. Let's go two more. All right, from here, big inhale, bring your right arm up, rotate. We're gonna take a breath or two here. And then tuck under, bring the arm through, threading your needle, let your hips pull to the right. Again, kind of shift around however you need, moving through the hips, sliding your body forward or back. Push yourself up and then other side, left arm up. And then tuck under, sliding your right arm through. Reach, reach, reach. <sighs> All right. Bring your legs up so that you can drop into a yogi squat. Sink nice and deep. Possibly you need to rotate left and right first, left and right hips onto one toe and then the other, and then settle between. Take a deep inhale. Plant your fingertips onto the ground. Exhale, shoot your butt up into the air. Straighten through as you can. Inhale, sink those hips down. If you're not able to touch the ground with your hips up and your legs straight, then bring a the weight over and lift the floor up to you. So it's nice to have kind of that connection to the ground floor with your arms. We'll go two more. And... Good, drop into a mid squat, a wide mid squat. We're gonna go through a few thoracic rotations. One arm up and then the other. Try to keep those hips leveled off and low. Perfect, and then come all the way. Arms come up overhead. Grab your left arm, pull to the right. Grab your right arm, pull to the left. Okay, so our rep range today is six to 10. Six reps at minimum, hopefully, and then 10 at maximum. So if you get to 10 and you could do five more, then you need to go up in weight. If you don't have heavier weights, then um, go at a faster pace and try to get to 15, try to get to 18. Um, find your challenge. We want to try to find that progressive overload. So I'm going to start with my 30s. Rack them up on the shoulders. Find your squat and we're gonna do an alternating squat press. I'm gonna shoot for six per side. <sighs> Always locked through the core. Use flexion from the legs to get those weights up overhead. <sighs> strong back, strong core. There's three. Oh. 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 
Get to six. Sit back and down. Nice job. All right. Now we're going to enjoy those pelvic rotations. We did a couple heavy rounds ago. So set up your foot. Cross your right ankle over. And then let your legs drop out to the left. Love how the heavy weights get the heart rate up. Woo. Roll back in. Drop the right foot. Left ankle drops or crosses over. And then legs drop out to the right. All right. Next up, we're going to do a single leg deadlift. I'm going to be holding both my 30s. Line up that supported knee and toe. If you would like, you can hold just one side. I just want to go a little heavier without putting a ton of work into one forearm. So the more you bend into the knee, then the more you have to work to press up through that hamstring and glute. Always locked core. Flex the toe back towards your knee. Six, I can get to eight. Lock that belly. Eight, I'm gonna go for 10. And 10. All right. Gear up for the other side. Square off the hips. Flex deep through the core and the back. Trunk and torso. Keep watch and vision on something on the ground. About five feet in front. That's not moving. Try to keep any round out of your back. Eight. Focus on that supporting leg. That's where the work is really coming from. All right. Back down to the ground. We'll get our rotation. Start with left foot over. Push the knee out away from the body. Rock over to the right. Feel that opening and pull through the pelvis. Roll back in. Switch to the other side. Right foot on top of the left knee. And then we'll rotate over. As you rotate down and back, try to keep awareness on the core. Still protecting that low back. Flex and rotate in. Ooh, okay, what do we have next? Dead rows. Staying with my 30s. We'll find that forward hinge, locked core. Make sure the shoulders get back and down first. Hinge over those legs and then just shave those weights up your thighs. Three, four, feel that upper back pinch together. Make sure your hips and shoulders are lined up neutral. I think I got five more in me. I'm going to go all the way to 15. Four, three, two, one. Time to go heavier. (laughs) My 40s are packed up, so I'm just going to stay my 30s for now. Okay, 
We're going to do a wide back fly. This is what we have our lighter weights for. Still going to go down for that pelvic rotation. It's important to get a break between these sets. Not really getting as long of a break as we technically could slash should. But it all works. It all adds up. And unless you're trying to win any competitions coming up for strength or, or visual physique, <laughs> you'll be just fine. All right. So we're going to find a low hinge. Palms are going to face together. Arms are going to come out nice and wide. Elbows can be slightly bent. And we want to try to find those serratus anterior muscles, the wings, the lats. Try not to move the upper body. Just pull those arms. Roll the shoulders back if you can. Control that drop. Make sure you stay out of your neck. Ten. I'm going to shoot for two more. Eleven. Twelve. Learn to work with your rep ranges. We obviously are on a little bit of a timeline here. Okay, we're going to go into uh, thread the needle for this one. So, but kind of start checking in. See what you can kind of decide that you have any reps in reserve. So could you hit another switch? Could you hit another two, three, five? And then there's a balance, right? So maybe I can do more reps with my tens, but if I were to go heavier, even getting to three reps, my form may fall apart. Just kind of depends. So learn what works. Learn what's healthy. Okay, we're going to do our overhead pull here. I'm going to grab that 35. Your hips stay on the ground. Okay, get set first. Pack into your back. So feel the shoulders pull out and then tuck in. Elbows pointing straight ahead. Reach far, far, far overhead. Just as much range as your shoulders feel comfortable with. Build the core and build that upper back. <sighs> Lots of back today. <sighs> Have to grab that core and then kind of hold your breath a little bit as that weight goes overhead. Stay out of your neck, so pack in your shoulder blades. Try to keep those arms straight. All right, that's my number. All right, go into your pelvic twist again. Left ankle on top of your right knee. Push the knee away from you. Drop over and out to the right. Take a quick check. What are your main goals? Pretty much all of us have a number one visual, physical goal. Physique or look, total vanity, no problem with it. It helps motivate us. <laughs> the good thing looking good also equates to healthy and well. Roll back in. Then we have a number one performance goal, or at least you should. 
What is it that you want to get better at? What is it that you want to feel more capable in doing? Keeping up with the kids, hiking with your friend, whatever it might be, find that performance goal, and then your longevity and health goal. What are you doing to keep you mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, but not visually, <clears throat> healthy and nourished? All right, set two. This is our second and final set. We're going to do our racked alternating squat press. So if you're lighter than I am, if you're going lighter, please work at a quicker pace. Get more reps. Feel that body under load. Six. Whew. That's that's the tough one. Oh. Start with the toughest. Very excited for my pelvic rotation and recovery here. Rotate out and over. Roll in and then the other side. Cross your other leg over, roll to the side. Maybe you're not taxing yourself as much, so just keep running your reps. If you don't want to stop and take the pelvic rotations, oh, enjoy watching me recover while you keep working. Okay, single leg deadlifts. I hit 10 per side last time, so let's see what we got this time. I'm gonna try my best to stay with the same Reps per exercise. <sighs> Connect to what you're doing. Pack your back. Flex your trunk and torso. <clears throat> Use the glute. Ten. Other side. Three. See where all you can find flexions, contractions, and holds. the back, strong back to hold support for those arms and that hold. Good job. Whew. Back to the ground. Make sure to get your arms out wide. It makes a difference for getting that cross stretch. Puts a nice little pull through the chest and shoulder as well. Grab your core, roll up. Whew. Other side. Roll over. Whew. 
All right, bring it up and we have our dead rows. I think I hit 15 last time. Go for the same. Get a nice healthy hinge. Three, four, feel like you're pulling the elbows back as opposed to up. Keep your upper body still. Shoulders open out and then roll back. One more. 15. Good, good. Back down. Rock that leg over. You should feel that stretch through the pelvis and the hip outside of the glute. Bring it in. Cross it over. Okay, we're gonna do our wide angle back flies. Roll in and come up. Two exercises to go. You got it. Okay, pack in, roll the shoulder heads back and down. Feel your back, hold control. <sighs> One more. All right, thread the needle. Slide the arm over. Oh. Maybe lift that other arm up. Stretch through front of the shoulder, then the other side. Really keep track of your protein on these heavy days. Anytime we're hitting up weights, you should be getting high quality protein. I tell my clients minimum of 90 grams a day, shooting for 30 grams minimum per meal. But really, unless you have any sort of digestion issues your doctors talk to you about, 0.8 to 1.0 grams, per pound of body weight per day. Super beneficial for most everyone, not everyone. So that's my disclaimer. Take charge of your system. Make sure you know what works for you. Get tests done or by experimentation. If you don't wanna spend the money on tests and you have the time, to experiment. Just keep track. Log all your food. And then you'll start to learn what bothers it. Where you feel better. Find your core. Pack that upper back. Done. Whew. Nice job. 
All right, we're gonna do a little bit different twist. Put your arms out in a goal post. So once your elbows are out, kind of pull your shoulders toward one another and then rotate back. So you're getting just a little bit of different rotation in your shoulders and arms. Feel the feels as you roll your shoulders forward, you can kind of feel the chest open a little bit across your biceps. Okay, roll both knees to the left, then take your left foot and put it on top of your right knee. Keep those arms in that goal post. Keep your elbow on the ground, your forearm, your wrist, and your shoulder. Bring your legs in. Grab around your glute, around your thigh. Dig your left elbow into your left knee. And then we're gonna do a count breath. So breathe in three. And out three. In four. And out four. In five. And out five. Switch to the other side. Arms back into your goal post. Rotate your knees to the right. Put your right foot on top of your left knee. Feel the stretch. Relax into it. Roll back into the middle, grab around that left leg, flex both feet, pull deep into the chest, dig your right elbow into that right knee, and then we're going to do our counts, three counts, four, and five. Come up to seated. We're gonna get our half cow face. Help stretch that hamstring, extend your left leg long, flex your toes back, right knee over the top. Inhale to lift, exhale, pull forward. Think back over what you did, how you feel. Heavy-weighted days are definitely slower. It's a different type of intensity. Physically and mentally right now, switch your sides. I feel like I could go another round for sure. I know I would feel it. If you have the time and you want to, go for it. Maybe on one of our lighter days coming up, you can challenge your weight and see if some of these heavy days have brought in a new lightness. <laughs> Something you used to think was mid-heavy is now mid-light. Okay, lastly, let's grab a downward facing dog. Stretch through those hamstrings again. Grab through the core, slide the shoulder blades down. You're gonna take that deep inhale. And then slowly walk your hands back to your toes. Round through the back and come up one vertebra at a time. All right, as always, thank you for joining me. And we'll do it again tomorrow. Building those light days in to bring us back to another heavy day.